The gist of it is, why do I like working with the Southern Highlands Reserve? Because it allows me to connect back to my true self by connecting to nature. I'm Kelly Holdbrooks, the Executive Director of the Southern Highlands Reserve. I'm in charge of the grounds, development of the organization, partnerships, and also visitor experience. The Southern Highlands Reserve began in concept in 2002 with our founders, Robert and Betty Ballantyne. They moved to Western North Carolina in the early 90s and over the course of the next few years began to purchase land across the street from their home. In 2003, they made it an incredible decision to bring in professionals to help inventory the land to see what kind of species were already existing here. At this point in time, there were 120 acres under conservation easement on Toxway Mountain. And in 2003, the Southern Highlands Reserve was created as a non-for-profit and a private operating foundation. From 2003 until 2008 was the infrastructure of the garden, and they built all of the garden rooms, the roads, the buildings, all of the structural features that you see when you take a tour in our core park. In 2012, I was one of the luckiest people in the world when I was offered a full-time position to join the staff at the Southern Highlands Reserve. I have focused on developing partnerships, opening up the doors to more visitors, and growing the organization, focusing on conservation, specifically red spruce restoration. So Western North Carolina is one of the most biologically diverse areas in the world. I think it is second to biodiversity with the Amazon forest. In fact, the Nature Conservancy, who is considered, you know, the mothership of all conservation organizations has focused their conservation work globally in four areas. And one of those four areas is the Southern Blue Ridge Mountains. Around 12 or 13,000 years ago, during our last ice age, the glaciers moved down to about Pennsylvania. So our mountains here in the Southern Blue Ridge were never glaciated. In addition to that, there were species over millennia that were moving ahead of the glaciers, trying to outrun extinction. And so they came down the spine of the Appalachian Trail and found what we refer to as sky islands where they can exist. Examples of that are the Highlands Cashiers Plateau, Grandfather Mountain, Roan Mountain, the Balsams, um, Mount Mitchell. These are all high elevation, 5,000 and above, and they create these niche ecosystems where these species can thrive. Now fast forward 12,000 years and the glaciers recede and some of these species become isolated here or stuck because they no longer have a pathway to get back up to the boreal forest of Canada. So what we're dealing with is all of the endemic species to the Southern Blue Ridge in addition to the boreal forest species that migrated down. So human impact is the canary in the coal mine when it comes to anything related to nature. In recent decades, it's evident that our impact on the natural ecosystems is degrading them. Around the turn of the century, due to unsustainable logging, our virgin forest was cut down and decimated. That was the beginning of progress and modernity marching forward. And now, 100 years, decades later, we're seeing the effects of these ecosystems not being able to rebound on their own. Southern Highlands Reserve is a founding member of SASRI, S-A-S-R-I, that's the Southern Appalachian Spruce Restoration Initiative. Other founding members are the Nature Conservancy, the U.S. Forest Service, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Appalachian Trail Conservancy, just to name a few. These are concerned organizations, nonprofits, and government agencies that have identified that the spruce fir forest is the second most endangered ecosystem in the United States. In 2013, I was invited to the inaugural meeting for SASRI. At that time, we had already been propagating spruce trees for other restoration efforts and for our own property here at Southern Highlands Reserve. When I arrived at that meeting with spruce saplings and small trees, everyone was in a state of shock and where did I get them? The Southern Highlands Reserve became the sole producer of red spruce seedlings and saplings for the Southern Blue Ridge for SASRI 
for over the last 10 years. We are focusing specifically on red spruce propagation because it is the least in decline conifer, which means that it's our best hope. We started working with our partners on public land to collect cone from the spruce trees that had remained from the logging. And they would bring us the cones, we extract the seeds, and then we begin the process of propagation, which involves a 30-day cold stratification process, and then a germination process, and then tending to them as we size them up in the propagation from little two-inch seedlings to one gallon. So it really is a collective and collaborative effort by SASRI partners to make everything come together. When I started here in 2012, I thought it would be really important to compare the core park to what we refer to as the natural woodlands. So what we have is an opportunity to look at how humans have affected a design and added and edited versus what is naturally occurring on the natural woodlands. So in the biodiversity project, which we presented at a conference in Rhode Island, the Environmental Design Research Association, we applied seven layers of analyzing how our effect on the core park compares to the natural woodlands. And what we were able to find is that our impact on the core park had increased the biodiversity by increasing native plants and adding a water source. The design behind the master plan for the core park is to create garden rooms much like the rooms in a house or like an architect would do. So as you go through the tour, you're gonna enter into different rooms such as the Woodland Glade, the Wildflower Labyrinth, or the Azalea Walk. Each one of these rooms is curated to elicit an emotional response and a connection to nature through thoughtful planting design and bones of the garden or what we call infrastructure. So it really creates this experience of wonder and excitement, things that you think back to childhood about and you're able to experience those again as an adult. One way that people can support the Southern Highlands Reserve is by connecting us with others that want to do the important work of conservation. We rely on support from other people to continue the great work that we're doing in conservation. Every donation counts. No amount is too small and we are so grateful for the support from past donors and look forward to continuing this work in conservation with them in perpetuity. Our volunteer program has allowed us to grow leaps and bounds. There are only five people on staff at the Southern Highlands Reserve and as a small nonprofit, every helping hand is important. When hiking in the high elevation mountains of the Southern Blue Ridge, people may not be aware that they are even hiking in a spruce fir forest. There is a coolness in the air, the forest floor beneath you is spongy as you walk. There is no noise of modern human activity. The light filtering through the spruce fir forest is dappled. The air is sweet. If you get close enough to the sap of the trees, you get what a true spruce fir smell is. It is an emotional experience. I remember the first time I walked into one, I was 25 and I was on Roan Mountain and I walked into this forest and I felt like I was in a movie or in a J.R. Tolkien book. It was something from another world or another place in time. 